I was watching a clip of the Keeping Up with the Kardashians, a TV show, and what piques my interest is that Kris Jenner was sitting around the table with her daughters, and she said that the doctor had found a little cyst on her ovary or a little tumor, and she was going to have it taken care of and then let the girls know later what the results were. Well, what is an ovarian cyst? Today we're gonna to talk about ovarian cysts, what it is, how we treat it, and what should you do if you have one? Well, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Dupont, I'm a board certified gynecologic oncologist, and I'm passionate about educating women to improve their lives, and I believe that begins with great health. If you're new here, welcome. And today we're gonna to talk about ovarian cysts. Well, September is Ovarian Cancer and Gynecologic Cancer Awareness Month. And so today I'm gonna to talk about ovarian cysts because sometimes women you know, who are diagnosed with ovarian cysts think that they have cancer. And today we're gonna to talk about just what the cysts are and how we treat them. So if that sounds good to you, continue watching. What is an ovarian cyst? So when we look at the ovary, and I'm gonna bring this up close, there are cysts on the ovary here. And I tell patients, a lot of times those cysts will contain eggs. Every month you'll make a cyst because it usually contains an egg and that cyst will go to the fallopian tube and well, that egg is released to the fallopian tube once that cyst breaks open. Now sometimes that cyst will break open and it'll cause some bleeding. Those are called hemorrhagic cysts, but most of the cysts that are related to ovulation are called functional cysts. A lot of times they go away on their own and they don't really cause problems. A lot of times patients will notice that they have a cyst because you know a doctor did an ultrasound either for some other condition or because they were having pain or abnormal bleeding. And so that's usually a reason why we get ultrasounds and sometimes we'll pick up cysts. Most of the time, cysts will go away on their own. How we treat the cysts will depend on several factors and we're gonna talk about that today. So the first thing is if you're having pain, just keep in mind that you know some women will have what's called a middle smirks pain will they have, they can kind of tell when they're ovulating. Well, that pain usually, you know, occurs when you're, before your cycle's about to start. And usually it goes away pretty briefly and most people tolerate it. And most people are used to it because they know that they have it. But if you have pain that's sharp, stabbing, that's chronic or constant, that's, and that's new for you, that's something to make sure that you talk to your doctor about. When we're thinking about cysts on the ovaries, we kind of categorize them based on a patient's age. So if you're premenopausal, let's say you're still having cycles every month, there's lots of things that can cause cysts on your ovaries. You could have functional cysts like we talked about before. You could have endometriosis, which can make an endometrioma, which is a collection of endometriosis. You could have paratubal cysts or cysts on the fallopian tube. You can also have you know, pelvic inflammatory disease, which can cause a cyst or an abscess. You can also have something um, like appendicitis, and it may not be a cyst on the ovary, but you may notice pain on the right side or pain near your ovary. You can also have dermoid tumors, which are benign tumors common in, in younger women, and those are very characteristic because they'll have hair and they'll have teeth and bone in them, so they're very characteristic on ultrasound. So those are a lot of different types of cysts that women who are premenopausal can happen. You can also get ovarian cancer as well. I talked about fallopian tube cancer in a prior video. And you can also get metastatic tumors to the ovary, so cancers that move to the ovary or spread to the ovary, as well as things like lymphomas that can look like, you know, a, a cyst on your ovary. In terms of women who are postmenopausal or women who aren't having cycles anymore, you know, they can have ovarian cysts that are also benign. You can get a, you know, benign cystatinoma. You can get, you know, an ovarian cancer. You can get a lymphoma that may look like a tumor in your ovary. You can also get metastatic tumors to the ovary. So, you know, there's lots of different things that can happen to the ovaries. You know, most aren't cancerous, but some are. And so definitely if you feel something's not right, definitely see your doctor. So after you've seen your doctor, what do they do? Well, they're going to want to examine you. They're going to, going to want to do a pelvic exam and they're going to get a good history to see, you know, how long have you been having discomfort? When does it happen in relation to your menstrual cycle? If you're still having cycles, how long does it last? Does it move or radiate? So those are some of the things I want you to think about before you go to your doctor so that when they ask you those questions, you're already prepared and you have all your answers already ready because a lot of times it just, 
takes thinking about the symptoms so that you can articulate to someone else exactly what's happening. You know, I'll have patients say, oh, I just hurt down there. Well, <laughs> that's not always very helpful because there's a lot of things that it could be. It could be GI, it could be bladder, it could be uterus, it could be ovary. So, you know, letting them know when you have the pain, how long it lasts, what helps, you know, does taking Motrin help? Does a heating pad help? Or what makes it worse? Is it worse when you're walking around? Is it worse when you're jumping up and down or exercising? So those are the things that the doctor's gonna to wanna to know. And then of course, you know, how long have you had it? And have you had this before? So once you've seen your doctor or your healthcare provider, a lot of times they're gonna do an exam first and then they may order, you know, an imaging test. Depending on your age and the symptoms that you're describing, they may start with the ultrasound, which is looking at the uterus and ovaries. They may get a CAT scan. Sometimes they may get a pelvic MRI, just depending on your personal health history and also the symptoms that you describe to them. After your imaging tests are done, you may or may not have some blood work. Sometimes we'll get what's called tumor markers, and those are usually proteins that certain cancers will, will produce or secrete. Common one that you should know about is the C125. Now it's not a perfect test, and in younger women it's less effective than in older women. And then 20% of patients with an ovarian cancer will have a normal C125, so it's not elevated in everyone. And then women who are young who have like maybe endometriosis or fibroids, the C125 can be high just because of some other conditions. I tell patients that any type of inflammation of the abdomen can cause that C125 value to rise. And then also we do know that, you know, one value may not be as important as the trend. So it may be something that your doctor, you know, repeats so that they see is this level consistently high or is it just kind of a fluke you know I had one patient that the doctor ordered a C125 and it was elevated and then she saw me for second opinion I repeated it and actually was normal so you know things do change and you know just because you had one test doesn't mean you know that that you have cancer so I just definitely want you to make sure you know that well, after you've had your imaging and your blood test if those are appropriate for you some of the things that we look for in imaging is you know, is the cyst on, or if you have a cyst, is it on one ovary, is it on both ovaries? So is it, you know, unilateral or bilateral? And then some of the characteristics, how does it look? Is it a simple cyst that looks like maybe a water balloon or is it a solid cyst or solid mass, I should say? And those are things that we're looking for. We're looking for also if there's septations, if there's little walls in the cyst or if there's nodules or if the um, surface has, lumps and bumps or is it smooth another thing that's very important that we look for is the blood flow you know has it have has the ovary or the cyst had increased blood flow or is it decreased or absent blood flow those things are very important one thing that i tell patients that you know especially that are um, patients who are young that have cysts, usually cysts that are over five centimeters in size may tours and that just means they may twist. So a lot of times if you have a cyst and it twists, it may cut off the blood supply. So it's almost like that little ovary is choking and it causes really sharp pain. And so we call that ovarian torsion and that's usually a surgical emergency. So for those patients, we usually try to do surgery right away because we know that that pain can just get worse and um, that ovary can get ischemic. So once you've had your imaging, you've had your blood tests, the doctor will talk to you about treatment options. And treatment just depends on the characteristics of the cyst, your age, and um, is it something that the doctor thinks may go away. Again, those functional cysts usually do go away after one or two menstrual cycles. So if your doctor says, you know what, repeat that ultrasound in, in six to eight weeks, that's usually why, because they want you to have two um, menstrual cycles to be able to see if that cyst will go away. You know, I had a patient earlier this year that had a 10 centimeter cyst and we waited a little bit. She was referred to me from somewhere else and I repeated her imaging and the cyst was gone. So those cysts can go away and so a lot of times we will do observation and not rush to surgery. Now, of course, you know, if you're older, like you're in your 70s or 80s and you have a big mass, a lot of times those aren't going to go away on their own. So it definitely does depend on your health history. So after your doctor's kind of gone over the results with you and talked to you about options, you know, if the cyst is persistent where it's not going away or the pain is getting worse, then a lot of times you may have surgery and, and depending on your age and your hormonal status, you know, they may just do what's called a cystectomy where they remove the cyst. They may remove the entire ovary and tube 
or they may, you know, offer you a hysterectomy. It all depends on your history and how that cyst looks and, and also your tumor markers, you know, are they elevated or are they normal? So it does vary person to person, but I do want you to know what ovarian cysts are. A lot of times they're benign. Most of the ones that I see, even the big ones are benign. Sometimes I'll have patients that'll have really large cysts and there's, there's a condition called a borderline tumor or a tumor of low malignant potential. I kind of tell patients that it's kind of on the border. It's not benign, but it's not cancer. It can come back, but usually we treat it with surgery. So those are borderline tumors. There's aren't as common, but they're more common in younger women than older women. And I do, you know, I see several every year. So today we talked about ovarian cysts, you know, what they are, how we treat them. I hope this was helpful for you. I do have a lot of two videos on ovarian cancer, what are the symptoms of ovarian cancer, and I'll also put a ovarian cancer symptom checklist in the, in the um, description below. It's from the ovarian, ovarian Cancer Project and the founder of that project, you know, talked with me last year and we have that video that's also available. It has great information about what are some of the symptoms of ovarian cancer and then, you know, how do you know what to do next? And then also, I wanted to let you know also if your OBGYN doctor sees you and you have a cyst and they're concerned and they want to refer you to a G1 oncologist, don't be alarmed. A lot of times they want a second opinion or they just want expert advice on how to handle your particular case. So don't be nervous. It doesn't mean you have cancer. It just means that your doctor wants to get more advice on how to handle your condition. Now, we do know that G1 oncologists, if they do see a patient with an ovarian cancer, you know, seeing us first, you'll get the most appropriate surgery. So we definitely do want to see you if you do have a cancer. But again, most of the cysts that I get referred to me, you know, are benign. So just wanted to make sure that you don't worry unnecessarily, but definitely pay attention to your body because I do believe that we, you know, we can feel when something's just not right. You know, I've had cysts myself in the past. I remember when I was in college, I had them all the time and I didn't really know what they were, but I get this start, this uh, stabbing sharp pain that would double me over. And, you know, I didn't know if it was something I ate or something I did because I was an athlete, but um, I've finally figured out I was having ovarian cysts. So they do come and they um, are treatable. A lot of times we'll put patients on birth control pills. You know, I also would tell my patients to take magnesium. That does seem to help. I'm not sure why it does, but it's been thought to help. But there's lots of different treatment options. So definitely if you're having pain that's not going away, see your healthcare provider so they can tailor treatment to your needs. Well, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you found this helpful, please share it with a friend, a sister, coworker, and I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.